Today on Real Life, changing cities through action and compassion. Dave Donaldson breaks down the strategic ways churches can impact urban areas. And on Real Life Love and Marriage, how important is going to church for your marriage? Tom Hollis, Jay, and Sydney open up about improving your marriage. Plus, a special music spotlight. That's today on Real Life. Welcome to Real Life. You know, Jesus promises us an abundant life, and we're believing for an abundant life for you today. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm going to be helping to host this program along with Sydney Goldman and Pastor J. Anthony Gilbert. Good to be here with you guys. Good to be with you on a yeah. Tuesday. Awesome. Yeah, switch I know, it up. That's awesome. The other Tom. <laughs> that's right. You guys don't have to change what you say. It's still Tom. Uh, we like to start the, uh, the program off with a verse, and today we have one from Psalm 5, verses 1 through 3. It says this, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my groaning. Heed the sound of my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray in the morning, O Lord. You will hear my voice. In the morning I will order my prayer to you and eagerly watch. And guys, mm. when I picked that verse, it was the eagerly watch part that yeah. I loved. I loved that thought of, I'm going to pray and, and I'm going to pray with expectancy, right? Mm. I'm eagerly watching for what God's going to do. Mm. Amen. Yeah. We well, you know, think about that too. God cares about our groanings. He cares about what we're feeling, what we're going through. He cares about all those things. But I love what you said. That's what stuck out to me as well is that, wow, he's, we can eagerly watch looking, knowing yeah. that God is going to move on our behalf and he's going to minister to whoever we're going through sin. Mm, that's really good because even that what hit my spirit is that that groaning and then, yeah. you know, that. but even hearing that like eagerly watching is that no matter what you're groaning, no matter what you're going through is know that we have a father in heaven, that we have Jesus seated at the right hand of the father yep. that is hearing your cries, that's hearing your petitions. And maybe that's you today. Maybe your new year hasn't started off to a great start because, you know, you're excited, but you're just feeling something is just not coming to pass or you're standing on the promises of God. But I just want to encourage you to know that when you're groaning, when you're crying out, and you're just coming boldly to the throne of grace, that God will meet you there, Amen. that God is waiting at expectations. So you can give us a call at our prayer line. The number's on your screen because we have prayer partners standing by that would love to connect with you right. in prayer. You Amen. know, uh, we're going to do a lot of things, wonderful things on this program that, that are going to be awesome, but nothing's going to be as important as that connection to God right now. So uh, I just feel prompted. We don't usually do this in the open, but uh, I agree with what you said, Sydney, that if there is a groaning in you today, if there's something that says, you almost can't, it's like you can't express this. You know, Pastor Jay, where it says groaning's too deep for words in yeah. Romans. It's like how we pray sometimes. It's just groaning's too deep for words. Don't let that pass. There is a God right. that loves you. There's a God that cares about you. And there's a God that wants to have you eagerly watch when you pray. Amen. You know, Tom, with that as well, I feel people watching right now that if you read in Exodus chapter one, the Bible talking about how the children of Israel, their groaning came up before God and that he remembered his covenant. I just want some of you out there to know right now that wherever you're groaning about, there's a covenant promise over that circumstance that you're going through. And God wants you to know that he hasn't forgotten about you, that his eye is on you. And as your groan comes up before him, he's gonna remember his covenant. Amen, amen, that is so great. Well, we just wanna give you a report about the Be The Bridge telethon that we just had. It was an exciting time. I gotta say, first of all, Great job, oh, great you. job. Yeah, I mean, very good thank job. You. She, yeah. Sydney, you did it. It was your first time producing the telethon. It was, it was. So it was, a, you know, my first time producing. It was such a joy with Crystal Bynum. And um, it was just, yeah. and I just want to just say from the bottom of my heart, we have such an incredible team of people that just came together. And we're just so thankful for your support and partnering with us, to, you know, to bring out the gospel, to be the bridge yeah. from beyond. I mean, we had four people that were saved. And to me, Amen. that's like, that's huge. You know, yeah. that we, yeah. our vision, yeah, yeah that in our telethon and people were ministered to, people were touched and just so it was an amazing time that Pittsburgh stood up and we had other places from like Ohio, Tennessee, like joined us to continue for the vision of Cornerstone because we want everyone to know who Jesus is. Sydney was the Energizer Bunny. She is like <laughs> running around. What was it? The Hot Mess Express? That's what they call me. They call me the Hot Mess Express. <laughs> 
She's <laughs> running here, running there. I'm like, it's okay, you know. Yeah. She like come up and apologize. I'm sorry we didn't come. It's like that's all right. I've been doing telephone for a long time. <laughs> Stand in one place and don't, don't, wait until they come. It's that's okay. Right. That's right. We want to give you some results from it. Uh, we uh, had uh, people that uh, stepped up and uh, pledged two hundred and seventy-seven thousand six hundred ninety-nine dollars and forty-six cents. Wow. Praise right. the Lord. Pittsburgh and so we want to we want to just uh, thank you for that. Thank you for being a part of what God is doing here. Yeah, that was so awesome. Great to be a part of it. And, you know, today we've got Dave Donaldson in the house, and he's going to be discussing his book and mission called City Serve. And it's all about how the church can cooperate with the government in order to reach the brokenness in our communities. It's going to be great. You're going to want to stay tuned for it. That's right. Uh, we have the, our love and marriage segment today, which we, we love, and uh, it's the importance of church. How important is church in your uh, married relationship? We'll have to we'll have, have some interesting responses on that. Yeah. On that. Yes, <laughs> I'm looking forward. And one thing that I know I love is viral videos. And so we have coming up a story about how one video has touched hearts across the country. You don't want to miss it. Amen. So we're getting ready to go here to a break in just a moment, but we're going to have Dave Donaldson back. So I want you to stay tuned because after this break, he's going to be back sharing some powerful things with you. Stay tuned. We promise to bring you the hope of the gospel. Spreading the gospel has always been a foundation, a cornerstone, and we promise to always share the good news over the airwaves. We promise to touch the lost and hurting hearts. That's the heartbeat of our ministry. Jesus is the only one who brings comfort and healing. And we're continuing with the mission that God gave to Norma Bixler that says everybody ought to know who Jesus is. We promise to teach God's word. And when the Holy Spirit is touching your heart, we want to be there with God's word. God's word is the foundation that we build our lives, our family, and this ministry on. We promise to broadcast quality Christian programs. Our goal is to inspire you and help you grow in your faith. Through our programs, we will continue to entertain, evangelize, and edify. We promise to lift up the name of Jesus. In everything we do, we want to bring glory and honor to our Savior. We promise to raise high His signal to the nations. Our mission is to broadcast the gospel to every generation and to pray for household salvation for every member of your family. You know, God promises us a lot. There are so many promises in the Bible. One of the, the biggest, of course, is when Israel entered the promised land that was promised to Abraham. Well, what about us? Is there a promised land for us? We're all, we all know the Lord. We all have Him in our life. At least I hope you do. Uh, but we, is, there, is there a place where God is leading us? Well, we have a devotional for you. It's called Enter the Promised Land. It's a 21-day devotional. And we'd like to send this to you for just your best gift, any gift that you can give to the ministry here. And we will send this to you. It's 21 days of, it's not like steps to get what you want. It's like steps of getting the kingdom of God inside of us. And uh, we would love for you to do that. So you can call the, the prayer partner and request your copy for your best gift. Right now, let's go over to Jay. Well, I'm so excited about this next interview. And our cities are definitely in need of revival, but where do we begin and what can we do? Dave Donaldson is the co-founder of City Serve International as well as Convoy of Hope. And in his new book, by the same name, he inspires and equips the body of Christ to compassionately meet the needs of our local cities more effectively. Dave, welcome to Real Life. Uh, my joy, great, great to be back. Great to have you, and I tell you what, God is doing some mighty things, and it's been a little while since you've been here, and I wanted to know if you could take a moment and just share uh, about your story, because your story has a lot to do with how God brought your ministry into existence, so share with us about your story today. Well, thanks for asking. Uh, Jay, it was uh, in 1969, uh, my parents were pastoring in Northern California, and one hot summer evening as they took off, uh, little did we know, you know, what was gonna happen. Uh, but a drunk driver slid across the divide and hit their car head on. Uh, our dad was killed instantly. Wow. Uh, mother survived, which was, that's an amazing story in itself. She was literally thrown out of the car. 
and there was a fire engine that just happened to be passing by. Otherwise, she would have died too. And uh, I remember uh, days following when my two brothers went to visit her at the hospital and we peered through the glass into her room and she was so beaten up and broken, we didn't even recognize her. Wow. And so there we were, uh, three uh, young boys and a younger sister, uh, wondering what would happen next, where would we get food, clothing, and who's gonna take in four young kids. And Jay, almost every night, uh, Christian brothers and sisters brought us hot meals. Wow. And incredible. Wow. And then, uh, you know, the big question, you know, was who's going to take in four kids? Yeah. And this sure. family, uh, they didn't have much, uh, but they had big hearts. And they uh, invited us into their single wide trailer. And I believe we have a photo of that trailer. Okay. Wow. If we could put that up there. And, and I recall walking up to that trailer and I was scared. You know, sure. and I, I wondered, would this be another stop along the way? Would they really want us and keep us? And as we walked inside, uh, Mr. Davis was standing there and he had this warm and biting smile on his face. And this is what he said. He said, you are with family and this is your home. Wow. That four letter word changed our lives and literally became the impetus for starting Convoy of Hope and now City Serve. Because Jay, you know, it meant that they were willing to not only share their space, but they're willing to share our sorrow, our pain, our anger, wow. and to invite that into their home. Yeah. And, and that's what compassion means. It literally mm. means to suffer with. Mm. Wow, wow. And there was 10 people in that? Uh, actually 11. 11 you know, people. Because when my uh, mother uh, was well enough, uh, they set up a hospital bed in the living room and uh, Mrs. Davis, Levada Davis, mm -hmm. she had a, this regiment. And I'll tell you what, if you, uh, if, you, if you didn't use the restroom when it was your time, then you had to wait till you got to school. Uh, so uh, tough love. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's amazing how God takes our misery and produces a ministry in our lives. And uh, how did God use what you went through to bring about Convoy of Hope and City Serve? Well, the Lord, you know, never wastes anything. That's right. And we, he, he's all always wanting to turn the wounded into wounded healers. Mm. And he turned our dad's mangled car into a fleet of Convoy of Hope trucks. Wow. That now have helped over a hundred million people uh, in America and around the globe. And we wanted to help others as we were helped. And it wasn't just a disaster response, uh, but also helping the local church reach out to families. You know, one story I have not shared uh, on the air here, uh, but I was speaking at Habitat for Humanity and I told them before Habitat was, we were. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, because our dad had this major fixer upper. It, it wasn't livable uh, when he died. And one Saturday, they brought us to that house and the community was crawling over that house like one big ant hill and turning that home into lifestyles of the rich and famous. Wow. And Jay, that was a turning point for me because okay. I stood on that front lawn area and instead of becoming angry at God, I said, God, I want to be like those people. Wow. That was a turning point. And, wow. and really that became for me uh, the, the impetus uh, for Convoy of Hope, working with our government uh, around the world, uh, Israel, and now City Serve. Yeah, because you, you're actually talking about in this book on how we can uh, collaborate with the government, and it can be done because you're actually doing it. So tell us a little bit more about City Serve and what's happening in your ministry right now. Well, if I can mention, uh, I think a great example of that. Please. Uh, years ago, I worked closely with uh, the White House uh, tied to the Faith Base and Community Initiative, which was the government throwing out a welcome mat uh, to the church to partner uh, for bringing solutions to the brokenness in our communities. And I was asked by Health and Human Services to host uh, the first ever summit on foster care and adoption. Wow. And I was up on the stage uh, waiting to introduce the uh, Secretary for Health and Human Services and I'm hearing the stories of these kids and, and their plight and 
how so many of them felt like a discarded piece of trash. And wow. so I went home and I asked my wife, uh, what do you think about us becoming foster parents? And my wife is one of the most compassionate, loving people on this planet. And she replied, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, our lives are already filled. Right, right. And, and so, uh, but we prayed. And the Lord told us this, wow. I know your lives are filled. You have no more room, but we want you to make room. Come on. We want you to make yeah. room because Jay, if God can get it through you, he'll give it to you. Come on, come on. If God can get it through you, if he'll give it word. to you. And uh, I know we're running out of time or, until our next segment, but we ended up uh, getting our certification. And uh, this young lady, 16 years of age, uh, showed up at our door. And I kid you not, her foster parent dropped her off in her box of all her belongings, like he was dropping off a FedEx package. He said, good luck. No wow. hug, nothing. Wow. And, and so she was walking up to our home and uh, bent over like a bruised flower. She was holding her pillow with one hand and, and, and as she approached the door, I swung the door open and I gave her a warm, inviting smile like Bill Davis yeah. gave to us 40 right. years earlier. Wow. She walked in, we gave her hugs, wow. and I whispered in her ear, Barbara, you are with family wow. and this is your home. Wow. And that's what compassion, wow. the Come compassion on. of Jesus does. Yeah. If we will make room, he just keeps on multiplying mm. it to change our world. Wow. Yep. So what's happening in her life now? She just had a big <laughs> event, right? Well, I'm so glad you asked that because uh, we're celebrating uh, because just uh, a little over a week ago, she married a wonderful young man. Wow. And we have a photo uh, of Beautiful. that uh, wedding. And if we can put that up on the screen. Yeah, they're up there here. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. we go. Very nice. Beautiful. And I got to tell you, I got to tell you, to see this, it, it moves me because the first time we met her, yeah. She was sitting on the couch and she was so bruised, neglected. She was like this. And to go from that to now this, this beautiful young lady who is not only getting married, but they have, they have declared that uh, they're going to become foster parents. Really? Yeah. So now it's three generations <laughs> in now. At least. Wow. Yeah. That is so awesome because, you know, it's amazing how, how important it is that even in your situation that you can open up your home and give to somebody that them Christian values, the love of Christ, someone that comes, like you said, completely battered and broken, and now see her at the point where she wants to get married, and then also want to do ministry on top of that. It's just really awesome to see that. I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really excited because, you know, this is a powerful thing. So we're going we're gonna to have more time in a minute, but real quickly, how important is it for churches to network with um, the government? And you're seeing a lot of rapid growth in yes. churches as they're doing it. Why do you think that is? Uh, as a nonprofit leader, uh, directing Operation Blessing, first for the 700 Club, and then Convoy of Hope, and now City Serve, the, the tragedy is this, that too many churches are outsourcing their compassion to national nonprofits like ours, yeah. and or they're sponsoring a child, which is wonderful, but it's like they're checking that compassion box instead of recognizing the brokenness in their own community. Their own community. And in yeah. learning, learning about the models that are out there and ways that they can serve their community and literally, literally lead, yeah. lead, be the epicenter of healing as it relates to partnering with government, uh, corporate, and other you know, nonprofits. Well, I want you to go a little bit deeper into that in a couple of moments. And we're gonna be back here for more with Dave. But right now, let's go over to Sydney and let's see what she's found today in the good news. You know, many of us say grace before we eat and a little boy's prayer at his preschool before lunch has touched thousands of hearts across the country. Take a look. Father God, Father God, we thank you, we thank you for this food, for this food, with any blessing, we ask you to bless it, make it nourishment, make it nourishment to your body, to our bodies, we all the poor boys and girls, bless all the boys and girls, all over the world. All over the world. 
Like, I just love that he was just at his preschool and leading in prayer. How beautiful is that? Love when it kids was a, that. It was a long, long prayer yeah, there, too. Was. I mean, he was going on for a while. He made sure he touched all the bases. Yeah. <laughs> Call on him at church, Pastor Jay. Come on, somebody. You know, wouldn't it be awesome one day to see our kids being full of the Holy Ghost, drop their heads in prayer and see revival break out? Yeah you know, on a school thing. It's not, it's not impossible for God to do, you know. And, uh, but we're so thankful to be back here with uh, Dave Donaldson and uh, he's sharing from his book, City Serve. And, uh, you know, at the end of our last segment, we were talking about the church and how it can collaborate with the government and the importance of them reaching out and not allowing the government to, or our organization to do it, but them actually being the hands and feet of Jesus, a little bit like what we do here at Cornerstone Cares. Yeah. And you've developed a model for that. Can you talk a little bit more about what City Serve is doing to help empower churches? Well, first of all, what a joy it is to meet both of you, uh, but this is a long time friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, uh, been, it's been a while though. <laughs> <laughs> it has. <laughs> but I was, you know, I, was, uh, I was so glad to have you back. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's wonderful, wonderful, and, and wonderful and to hear everything that's going on. And thrilled to just uh, learn more about Cornerstone Cares and how that continues to blossom mm -hmm. around the world. Uh, let me tell you this story. I think it illustrates what's happening in many of our churches. Uh, many years ago, I was asked to speak at a church and the pastor went up to the podium. I, I thought he was gonna introduce me, uh, but instead he resigned from the church. And, and to make matters worse, my sermon topic or title was never quit, never <laughs> give up. <laughs> and, and afterwards, I said, you know, what happened? And he said, well, first of all, I'm sorry I didn't give you any forewarning. Uh, yeah. But, he, yeah right. <laughs> but in between the services, he said, one of the board members said, pastor, pastor the church, not the community. Hmm. And wow. he said, I have been trying to get my church to be community yeah, focused yeah. and to cultivate the partnerships that you were talking about, Jay. And obviously this church does not have a vision for it, so I'm resigning. Well, too many pastors are discouraged, dispirited. They feel outgunned, overwhelmed by the needs in their own church, their community. At the same time, the Lord is raising up these compassion models in our country and around the world that can be adopted. And they're scalable. They just need to know how to do it. And that's why we wrote that book, uh, City Serve. It's got 40 different contributors wow. uh, that share uh, models, com church-based compassion models that, again, are scalable for any size church and community. And so we have raised this model up in Southern California, and we are helping the local church uh, not only equipping them with these models, but we have also developed these warehouses. Uh, we call them hubs. And these hubs are all, all over Southern California. We have major corporations that are donating product. And then that product is going to the local church. And then that local church is meeting the needs of its community. Wow. For example, Melissa, uh, I was speaking at a church and after the service, she came up to me and she said, my kids have been sleeping on the floor for months. And so she said, I'm so grateful that, uh, that CityServe provided my kids you know, with a bed. And she said, every night when I put my kids down to sleep, I look at that bed and, and, it, and it, it just it moves me because I think of a God that cares and a church that cares. Mm. Wow. And so all of these furnishings that are available you know, for uh, people that have lost everything in disasters. Uh, I think about with Convoy of Hope responding to the disaster yeah. uh, here mm -hmm. in the Northeast. And uh, we always use the local church as a staging area. And we've partnered with Cornerstone for years. And I remember a news reporter asking this single mom that was there getting help, is this your church that is helping you? And she replied, it is now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so if we meet the needs of our community, our churches will grow numerically and they'll grow spiritually. And that's what's happening. Churches that have been stuck for years are now growing. Well, I wanted to ask you about that side of it, Dave, because, you know, we uh, are good at giving out the word of God. That's what our churches do, right? We, we're used to that. 
But what, what happens, what's transformative? Because I've seen it when people start to give food to someone. When they, from the, it's transformative from the person who receives, but how about the Christian, the, the church member, who, as we've always said, is sitting in the pew, and now they're not. They're out there swinging a hammer, or they're out giving food, or they're out putting a bed together for someone. What's the, what's the transformation there? I think the great example is the lad who gave his loaves of bread and fish to the disciples. The disciples gave it to Jesus. Jesus feeds a multitude. That young boy, he could have gone out and had a, a good lunch, but it would have been an ordinary lunch. Instead, he gave what he had to Jesus. Jesus multiplied it to meet the needs. So instead of an ordinary lunch, it was an extraordinary lunch. Mm -hmm. If we want to have an ordinary life, keep it. Keep it all. But if you want to experience an extraordinary God that has placed you on this planet to accomplish the extraordinary, give it away. Mm -hmm. Because like I mentioned earlier, if God can get it through you, he'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. That's how God could take an, an angry young boy at nine years of age and, and use somebody like me you know, to, to reach millions through Convoy of Hope and now City Serve. And it's, it's a clear example of if God can get it through you, he'll give it to you. And that applies even to our giving financially to great ministries like this and to Cornerstone Cares. I've watched it, how God has multiplied the ministry here through people giving generously and faithfully. Yeah, God's, God's so faithful, I was going to ask because I'm, I'm actually part of a new church plant that's in an urban context, like in the inner city. And just like we were talking about the compassion models and like feeding people. And I was just curious to hear more about the compassion model, because I think it is when you are church planning or your churches, you know, most a lot of churches I've went to are in the city. There are some challenges that you do face that may like when other, you know, sit, churches that are in other areas don't have the same ills or problems that when you're in the city context. That's a great question. Uh, the needs are so complex and diverse. I, I gotta tell you, I've been on the phone really early this morning with uh, uh, Lynn Johnson, who is over Health and Human Services, the Assistant Secretary, uh, who is a modern day Esther, by the way, that God has placed there. And uh, she's dealing with not only foster care adoption, but homelessness really is sweeping our nation. Uh, we've, we have literally put billions of dollars into confronting homelessness, but it grew by 16% in our country this past year. Wow. And I, I would say this, that many of our churches have, have lost their compassion muscle or they've never found it. And we, when we're working with these churches that have not done really anything as far as reaching out to their community. We don't start them with a 5K. <laughs> right, you, right, you start right. them with like feeding the hungry in your neighborhood and then you can graduate into like addressing foster care, uh, homelessness, addictions and so forth. And so start where you can and then you know grow from there and celebrate the successes. And I'll tell you, you know, David, when David fought Goliath and won. The Israelites now had a model, right? Prior to that, they were scared. They were overwhelmed, and they're all standing back. But when David wins, there's a victory. There's a model. The Bible says all Israel fled, right? I mean, they, they chased the Philistines. We need successful models in our city and that we can champion, and they're there. Uh, whether it's, you know, here in the Pittsburgh area or across, you know, the country. Yep. We, you mentioned about how a lot of churches have never found their compassion muscles. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I want to digress for a minute to the pastor that may be struggling out there because maybe there's someone else watching right now. They got a desire for this type of outreach. What would you say would be some practical insight as to how do you get your church to buy into that vision if they're fighting you at that point? Well, a good way to start is to read that book, yeah. <laughs> the City Serve book and, and other tools that are uh, available out there. Uh, we also have a new podcast called Influencers, and that's who we're interviewing. We're interviewing people, leaders, influencers that have been successful in their communities. Uh, we call it from your neighborhood to the nations. And so I would study, I would learn, I'd get inspired and obviously, you know, pray, you know, put prayers on your legs, legs on your prayers. And 
we've been talking about like our daughter, our foster daughter that we adopted. God is a father to the fatherless. The Bible says he sets the lonely in families. How does he accomplish that promise? It's through us. And I think through prayer, pastors praying, it's amazing how God will send you people. He will send you resources. The, the amount of resources that we're now garnering in just SoCal alone is over $25 million wow. of new product. Wow. Wow. We've now launched City, Sar City Serve Arkansas, which is about seven to eight million, just over the last four million, four months. And so, uh, but you gotta get out there. You, know, you gotta get out there in the traffic. And uh, when you do, you will discover that God's already gone before you. You know, I, I know of a, a young girl, she was 22 years old, didn't, she was just out of college, heard of a need and it was in another country, it was in actually Romania at the time. All it was was she, she said, well, I don't know what to do, but they need people to hug babies. So I can go hug mm. some babies. By the time I met her, which was seven or eight years later, she had founded three orphanages in that time, okay, in, in Romania. And I thought, well, here's someone that didn't know what to do. And I think that's what a lot of people, maybe people who are watching, Dave, they don't know what to do. You just mentioned that. Read the book is a good, good way to start. But there's incredible power that God wants to flow through, and all it takes is this willing step. Willing step and creativity. Uh, we have literally racks of dog food donated to us. So it's like, what are you going to do with dog food? Well, we had one pastor like what you described in a small community. And so he saw that dog food and he was not able to get to know his neighbors. He would go up to their door, they would you know, crack it open a little. <laughs> and, and then the Lord showed him he could use that dog food to get to know their pets. So he's literally going door to door, giving them dog food and getting to know their pets. And as a result, they're calling him the dog man you know, in his city. <laughs> and I kid you not, his church has doubled doubled in attendance. With dog food. With dog food. Come on, somebody. There you go, Pastor Jay. <laughs> so, New mission. There you go. There, hey. there you go. Hey. We'll make sure you get a pallet. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> what a great idea, though. I mean, what an what a incredible, like you said, creativity. There's all kinds of creative things. And sometimes, you know, I can remember thinking, well, that's not going to work, you know? <laughs> we, we tend to, but those kind of things are incredible that when God uh, just, he just empowers that. We had uh, last uh, May, a huge pallet of tuxedos. Wow. It's like, okay, who can we give those <laughs> to or whatever? Well, this one church, they decided that they were going to have like their own prom uh, for the community. And they gave those tuxedos to poor families. And they showed up decked out like Jay is uh, today. That is one nice jacket. Thanks, Convoy Hope. Thanks, City Service. When I get to heaven, okay, that's what I want. Wait, you see what, he's gonna put a, you're going to put a tuxedo on and go that's deliver right. dog food to the neighbors. So, so you think about now, you know, this community sees that church, you know, as, hey, this is a church that, that's relevant that cares about kids. They can't even afford a suit, can't afford a jacket. Wow. And so the, the creativity of how God is using this product, you think of disaster response. People have lost everything, like in the fires in Northern California, yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're able to provide product, you know, that they have lost. And beds, you know, chairs, a table, you know, a table, think about it. I, my family, you know, we grew up poor on welfare. The idea of having a table that you would sit around, how powerful that is. We have a lady named Anna. We have a video uh, about her, and she's weeping when she's there at that table we gave her uh, because she's now able to eat dinner with her kids. Wow. Well, I think it's really time for us to get out of the mentality of us four and no more, Dave. Uh, you know, I really think that's so important. Would you just encourage, just talk to some people maybe in their homes and just some final closing thoughts as how important it is for us to get out there and to give them some action steps, just say, hey, we need to get out there in the community and do something great for the Lord. Yeah, I think Tom said it well. Uh, I think as soon as you, you step out, you know, with love and compassion like the Davises did. And we have a picture 
Uh, picture's worth a thousand words of us at the 25 anniversary uh, with the Davises. And we're up on stage and we brought them up to, up now. to uh, celebrate, you know, how the Lord used them to really take us in and nurture us. And you'll see if you look at that photo that Mr. Davis, he's about to tell me something. And this is what he said. He said, I never knew our love for your family would result in helping so many people. You'll never know. Wow. You'll never know until wow. you reach out with whatever you have. And God will take it, multiply it. He'll change your world, and he'll change you. Wow. Amen. It was fantastic, Dave. Thank you so Thank much. We're, we're going to ask you to join us at the end of the program for prayer with, uh, with everyone when we, we get together for prayer. Thank you so much for sharing. It's great to have you. My joy to be back. Yeah, Thank back you. Here. Thank you. Amen. Well, we've got uh, Music Spotlight. Uh, Jason Gray is going to bless us with the song, Remind Me Who I Am.
you know, guys, I really loved like watching that video and just seeing the different labels and different things that people, you know, were showing and showcasing in that music video. And it reminds me of, I just want to share a quick story. Um, it's like I'm part of a new church plant that's in the Pittsburgh area called New Culture Church. And we recently had somebody, he came, he's like, he's homeless. Um, he had been off on, been on the streets for like, I mean, sleeping and like the coldest times of year, like wow. in, you know, abandoned houses, different things. And we have these things called fam nights that we come, we eat together and share. And one thing that just moved me is that like, you know, I think sometimes when we see somebody out on the street or we see somebody that just is in favorable conditions, it's like you really don't get to hear their story. But one thing that just really touched our heart is that he always said to us, he's like, you're my family. And it just brings wow. tears when he's like, yins are my family. That's what he said, wow. you know. And so I just think of, you know, I think as us as Christians about being compassionate, about loving one another, not because I think a lot of times in our world we put labels or yeah. certain things are like, oh, you're an addict or, or you're homeless or, or you're this or you're that. And it's like Jesus never put labels on us. He easily could have. He knows our sins and he knows everything that, you know, we walk through and we go through. But Jesus sees us for who we are and the heart that we have inside. And so the encouraging thing about that story is actually that young homeless man, actually for the first time, he got a job and he's wow. working. And so wow. just to see Praise how God. that love, you know, when you love on that's somebody, right. that it can mm -hmm. move, like that compassion we have for others and to see how that can change mm -hmm. your lives. That's what it's all about as being a Christian so we can show the love to other people. Amen. Yeah, you know, it's so true, Sydney, that, that there is a compassion of Christ mm -hmm. that is beyond anything that we can, can imagine, you know, because uh, just if I could take a moment to ask you what label would be on you. You know, I think of the prodigal son and I think of the, the labels that people would have put on him, you know, the disrespectful to, to father, you know, uh, a fornicator, a waster of, of family fortune. And there's different labels. And even he put labels on himself, you know. I'm sure he, he thought himself a failure. He said, let me go back to my father. And you know what? He had a label he was going to put on. It said hired man. You know, mm -hmm. let me be as like a hired man to you, father. Because he didn't feel like he deserved to be restored. And maybe you're there. Maybe you're there right now. And you say, I don't feel like I deserve to be restored. You don't know what I did, Tom. Well, no, I don't know what you did, but I know what Jesus has done. That's right. Okay, I don't, I don't know what your problem has been in your life. I don't know what things people have put on you or things you brought on yourself. But there's, uh, there's uh, somebody right now I'm talking to, you feel like you got 10 of those hanging around your neck, those cardboard signs that we just saw that say those things, that maybe say addict or maybe say sinner, or maybe say broken, maybe say homeless or helpless. And I want to tell you right now, God is reaching down to take those off of you today. Today is your day of freedom. And it's simple. You just come to the Lord. Maybe you did this one other time. You said, well, I, Tom, I prayed a prayer. I went forward when I was 10 years old at church. I want to say, surrender to God today. Surrender to God. Whatever you've done, however you've lived your life, however it's been, surrender to God today. I just have this picture, guys. I have this picture in my mind that Jesus has taken. Somebody's got like 10 of those around yeah. their neck. And he's taken all those signs off of you right now and saying, today is your day of freedom. Right now is your day of freedom. So I want you to cry out to him right now. I want you to pray with me. You know, you know that we need to understand that we have sinned. We've fallen short of the glory of God, all of us. All sinners up here on the, on, the, on, the, on the set right now, okay? We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And God says, I have died for you that your sins may be washed as white as snow, that you will never have to deal with those sins again. So let's pray. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Come into my life. Come into my life. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Take those names off of me. Take those names off. And of put me. beloved on me. And put beloved on I me. I want to be your son. I want to be your son. I want to be your child. I want to be your child. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, it's not that the prayer is magic words, it's that your heart Amen. sought after God. He rushes to meet you, just like the prodigal son's father rushed to meet him and said, you're not a hired man, you are my son. You're restored. You're restored back to God. Now walk in that. Why don't you call our prayer line right now and, and tell the prayer partner I just prayed with Tom on TV. And uh, you know what? They'll rejoice with you, they'll pray for you and they'll help you to get started on that, on that journey with God. It's gonna be awesome. Amen. Well, we'll be back in just 90 seconds with our Love and Marriage segment. Hi, I'm Katie Farrell. 
I'm an author, a registered nurse, and a mom and wife to some of the pickiest eaters on the planet. People say that eating healthy is bland and boring, but I'm here to show you a better way with wholesome, simple recipes. All of my dishes are stamped with my family's seal of approval. Think you can't eat those brownies and pasta? Think again. I'm here to share my secrets with all of you. Here's what we're cooking today on Dashing Dish. Did you know that you can take CTVN with you wherever you go? Just subscribe to Cornerstone Network on YouTube. That's all you have to do to enjoy hundreds of great videos from all your favorite Cornerstone shows, all on the go. Real life interviews, the best of the best of origins, and music from the best Christian artists, all with one click. So make sure to subscribe and click the bell today and get ready for a life-changing message for wherever life takes you. Welcome to our Love and Marriage segment. Again, we love this segment. It's so much fun. And today's question is, how important is going to church for your marriage? Go ahead, Sid. Okay, so I was talking to my husband, Jake, about this question. And the one thing that we were talking about is that, um, so I think, yeah, it's like a beautiful thing to go to church together, and I'm a big advocate of that. However, what we were saying, though, you can go sit in that pew every Sunday, and stuff still doesn't change in well. your marriage. So I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. I'm just trying to keep it real. Cause, right. So I'm, I think we were just really, we were talking about it, that yeah. I think that what do you do after church is more yeah. important, yeah. because the first ministry <laughs> is your marriage. And I think a lot of, so, you know, a lot of times we do a bunch of different things if you're involved in ministry which is great we're involved in the ministry at our church but we have really just taken time to just sit back and be like okay like working through issues in our marriage or making sure that we're praying together reading the bible together because i just see it a lot of times like you can sit in church sunday after sunday after sunday smile and look happy but are you really applying those principles that you're mm -hmm. learning or taking it a step further i mean what the pastor's message and sharing it is great but how are you what are you looking the word what is god saying about in your lives mm -hmm. your marriage or your vision. So that was our little thing. I know mm, if there's a little good. ching ching in there, but also <laughs> <laughs> also, I think about like, what about people who, you know, their spouses, they're not the believers, you know, yeah. what do you do in that situation? You know, I grew up in that kind of scenario. So that's what my husband and I were talking about. And I'm going to throw it over to you. Okay. <laughs> all right. You know, that's great. Actually, you took all the words right out of my mouth. I was thinking the exact same thing, honestly. Um, and I was thinking, but well, before I thought that I was actually like, well, if we don't go to church, it's going to be a problem because we're the senior pastors. There. So <laughs> there's going to be a big problem. Gonna Something's going problem on. Right that, that's a sign that our marriage is probably something's going on at home. <laughs> But, uh, but, you know, I agree with you 100%. I think there's a lot of people that go to church and put their little Christianese on, but they're not living it at home. And I think that's where a lot of people get lost. Uh, their children get lost as well. Mm -hmm. Not all. It's not a rule of thumb. But many times kids hear one thing in the pulpit, you know, and they're seeing this is how you're supposed to treat. And then daddy and mom go home and they're just treating each other any other type of way. And then when they show up at church, they hold each other's hand and they smile and they look real pretty. And they know how to say, God bless you, brother. And they know when to stand and sit. And they're on the, the demon deacon. I didn't say that. The deacon board. And they're on, you know, they got all these different types of things that they're on, but they're not living it at home. Right. I always say this whenever I have an opportunity. My greatest encounters with God were not in the church. They were in my parents' home. My brothers and I were all baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues in my parents' living room. No one laid hands on me, but I believe it's because of how they lived. And so I believe it's so important to go to church. I'm all for that. That's important. But beyond that, we have to make sure that we're living church at home. We have to make sure we're modeling it. We have to make sure we're living it. And make sure your children in your marriage, that you have encounters with God at home. If you have that at home and you have those encounters with God at home, church is so much more fun. You yeah. can really enjoy it because you're seeing the fruit of it in your life, in home, and in your marriage. And as a result, you can go to church and be the church, and you're not going to church always just to get healed and hopefully you can make it through to the next week. Well, you know, it, it's interesting because I wouldn't call myself a church person. I've gone to the same church for 40 years, okay? I, you know, I've, I just have. I'm surprised. It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I'm not, I'm not a church person. I'm like, my favorite part of church is a benediction because I get to leave, you know? I mean, now listen, I, it's not that I don't love church and I don't love being, being taught. I'm just like ready to go, you know? I, Gina, I was talking to Gene about this last night. He said, I said, remember that time we dropped the kids off for Sunday school? This is back when churches had Sunday school. We dropped the kids off for Sunday school and then we went out and had breakfast. I was like, that was one of the best days, wasn't it? <laughs> So there's a lot to this. Obviously, even for me, who's happy for the church to be over, we, you know, we need to, we need to have that. We need to have Amen. that community in our life. We need to have that teaching in our life. We need to have the, that fellowship. You know, what is fellowship? Is it coming in, sitting down, and then hurry up and leave? No. My wife might say that's what my fellowship is, but I, I actually, no, I love to talk to the people there. I love to, to uh, you know, and, and, and then other times, you know, whether it's a, a Bible study or somewhere where there's more interaction, you know, or a fellowship uh, group or something where you can have, that's really important. And it's important as a couple to have that mm -hmm. because there's going to be problems, there's going to be issues that come up in, our, in your marriage. And there's times, you know, these, these issues, you need those people. I've said this before, but I'm an elder at my church, okay? And I look around at the elders. I mean, I've known all those guys for 20 years plus, you know, so I don't have to start from square one. It's mm -hmm. important that I've got relationships that are deep and it matters. Amen, amen. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was like, that's like, I like what you were saying about those relationships because <laughs> even at like our church, it's a church plant, so it's a smaller, you know, number of people, but it is nice to like cultivate those relationships and build those relationships with different people. And um, I guess to piggyback, go back to like a certain point, I was thinking in the Bible um, about marriage and like there's this one couple I love, their name's Manoah and you know, they don't, his wife's name isn't mentioned, but it's actually Samson's parents and how like an angel of the Lord appeared to them and spoke to them about their child. So I just, that has always been like my model. Like I like pray, I'm like, God, I want to be like, Manoah and his wife that they had an encounter at their home um, with you speaking to them. That's like really like just what you were just saying about having those encounters at your house is so important. But also just thinking about um, Jake was bringing this up. He's like, look at the book of Acts and how they lived in community. That's important. They wasn't they weren't spending a lot of time mm -hmm. in the synagogue. They were out and about. They were sharing things together. That's more to me like what church looks like in that community, which is so yeah. important. So yeah. I think we've kind of moved away from it. Like we get so focused on going to the service and da -da -da -da. Yeah. it's like there's more to Christian life than just that. But I also believe with that, I'm gonna take a little bit of a turn on it as well, is that there are times though that you need to keep a lookout for warfare before you go to church. Just because you had a rough Sunday or a rough Saturday night doesn't mean you shouldn't go. Many times, Tom, I think a lot of times that's when the devil hits us. Yeah. I can always tell yeah. if I'm going to preach some of my best mess or if my wife and I are tag team preaching, I know, man, if we get hit Saturday night and there's a little friction between us or something's going on, we need to learn and say, oh, man, the devil is nervous because he wouldn't be trying to put a wedge between mm -hmm. you and bring problems in your home if there wasn't something you're getting ready to get at church. So if you're going through sometimes, you say, man, the devil always hits us on Sunday nights or right before we go to small groups, get encouraged because God getting ready to do something supernatural when you get there. I was just reading where uh, Jesus was tempted for 40 days in the wilderness and the devil departed him and it, from him after mm -hmm. he rebuked him. And it said, waiting for an, a more opportune yeah. time. Yeah. So sometimes the devil sees your commitment and he departs. Then he comes back and says, hey, I'm here again. I want to do something. <laughs> you're not looking. Now you're not yeah. looking. Yeah. You know, so we, we need to be aware. I would encourage you be involved in church, be involved as a couple in church. There's a lot, there's a lot of women, just women in church that I, I see. It's yeah. in our church, it's a lot of places, but you should go as a couple and be involved and you can be glad when benediction comes, but it's, it's okay. You get through, you get some good teaching, you're gonna survive it, but you'll be blessed <laughs> if you go. I'm sorry I'm saying this with a pastor up here. Anyway, we're gonna be praying for you guys in a moment. So you can still call in for prayer. The prayer partners are there, but let's see what's on tomorrow's Real Life. Tomorrow on Real Life, restoring the roar. Evangelists Pat and Karen Schatzline disclose how you can defeat the spirit of fear. Plus, on Sister to Sister, they discuss if having a bucket list is a good idea or a bad idea. And Tom McGuff is all in as he highlights a Faith and Family Channel special event with Sid Bream. That's tomorrow on Real Life. Well, we love to pray for your prayer requests, and we've had people, uh, you know, throughout the 
the weeks and days and months. Uh, you know, we talk about, we've been here for a long time. Um, I just was looking at the statistics, uh, 2.4 million prayer requests have come in to, to Cornerstone Television. Wow. You know, 2.4 million prayer calls have come in. Wow. And, and, and wow. you know what? I love this because we take these yellow sheets and, and every name that's on here has already been prayed for mm. by a caring mm -hmm. individual, that's one right. of our prayer that's partners. Right. And so, but we want to pray again for, for the needs and lift them up to you. And I'm just going to ask, Dave, can you take a few of those and then pass sure. them over? And, uh, you know, we, we have uh, someone here is praying for, the, for restoration, okay? I'm not sure what, whether it's spiritual or, 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 or what it is, but praying for restoration, uh, salvation for Bob here. So someone has called in and believing for salvation for Bob. Uh, just for traveling mercies. There's so many requests. Do uh, you guys have any that you want to call out there, Dave? Yeah, I just really feel impressed. You know, we were all mourning, you know, the death of Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. And we were talking before, Jay, when you think about his wife and, and daughters and, and how many single parents are out there because of maybe a death or a divorce. And I think lifting them up. Amen. Why don't you, we only have about two minutes left in the program. Can you take a time, pray for that, pray for the, the, the various people that are mentioned here? Lord, we don't know all the reasons for tragedies like has taken place with Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and the others on that helicopter. Uh, but you have a greater purpose yes, and plan. Do, God. And we just pray that you will wrap your arms mm -hmm. around, yes. Lord, his wife and daughters oh, yes, and extended God. family. And we know, Lord, that in the midst of tragedy, Lord, there's a grieving. Help them during this grieving. Help them to gather uh, to their friends, their church. Uh, but out of it, we know that you're going to use this testimony as they give. And so we pray for single parents. Yes. Right now, those that have lost loved ones from yes, death, Lord. divorce, mm -hmm. that right now, Lord, that you will wrap your yes. arms around them, give them peace. Uh, we know, Lord, that... There are those watching that have drifted away from you out yes. of perhaps anger because of tragedy. And we're asking that you will bring them back. Yes. Bring yes. them back today yes. and use them for your glory. Yes. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you, Dave, so much for being with us again. Pleasure. So good, so good to, good to see you, you again. Yeah. 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 Wonderful to have you. Guys, great program. Wonderful. Awesome. Go to church on Sunday, for sure. Make sure you're there. <laughs> we want to leave you with a blessing today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Jesus wants to give you peace today, whatever you're going through, the peace of God. Cry out for it, it's coming to you now. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.